and not ashamed. Should we do evil that good may come? This is the question we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Romans on walking through the Bible. Today we're going to be discussing Romans chapter 3, verses 1 to 8. But before we do that, let's read the passage. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Romans chapter 3, verse 1. But if you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. What advantage, then, has the Jew, or what is the profit of circumcision? Much in every way chiefly because to them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, that you may be justified in your words, and you may overcome when you are judged. But if our righteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, what shall we say? Is God unjust who inflicts wrath? I speak as a man. Certainly not. For then, how will God judge the world? For if the truth of God has increased through my lie to his glory, why am I still judged as a sinner? And why not say, let us do evil that good may come, as we are slanderously reported, and as some affirm that we say, the condemnation is just. As we've opened each lesson thus far, here is Paul's thesis for much of this book. The just shall live by faith a faith that is produced by the gospel of Jesus Christ. Man needs this gospel because man fell into sin. God let us walk into sin, the sin which we commit, whether it's idolatry, sexual sins, covetousness, rebellion, or whatever, whatever sin we do. When man thinks himself wise, he abandons God. God will allow us to leave and suffer the consequences. But he has also provided us a way back through Christ. But lest the Jew think of himself as not included in chapter 1 because he had the law, he was included because he had broke that law, and on the whole rejected the Messiah. And lest the Gentile believe it was unfair to, for God to judge them as sinners when they didn't have the law, God wasn't being unfair, for they did have a law, just not the law of Moses, but the law God gave to Noah, a law that had been passed down through the ages, and a law that they broke too. Both the Jew and the Gentile stood condemned before God and in need of a Savior, but both would come on equal grounds to Jesus, be circumcised of the heart by the Holy Spirit through faith in Jesus Christ, and be saved. But that begs the question for the Jew that Paul answers here in chapter 3. Was there any advantage that the Jew had over the Gentile? In terms of salvation, no. Both Jew and Gentile would be saved the same way and would be under the same covenant. But there was still an advantage to being a Jew. You had the law of Moses that pointed to Christ. You worshipped the true God of heaven. You knew the Messiah was coming. The Gentiles knew none of these things before the gospel went out. When Paul started preaching in Athens in Acts 17, where did he have to start? He had to start by telling them of the true God and then turning to Jesus. When Paul started preaching in a Jewish synagogue in Antioch and Pisidia in Acts 13, where did he start? With the promise made to Abraham and then turning to Christ. You see, even though the Jew would have no advantage over the Gentile in Christ, there should have been an advantage of the Jew over the Gentile in coming to Christ. And yet, many Jews didn't believe. Would this make the faithfulness of God's promises of none effect? Would God be unjust for punishing the Jews who didn't obey Christ? Absolutely not. In fact, the Jews' rejection of Christ would show God to be true and every man a liar. How so? Because in the law of Moses, God said in Deuteronomy 18, verse 19, that whoever would not hear the words of the prophet like unto Moses that would be sent in God's name, God would require it of him. In other words, they would be judged for that rejection. God's words would be vindicated, and those who judged God as unfair or unjust would be proven to be wrong, a sentiment Paul takes from Psalms 51, verse 4. But of course, that begs another question. If our unrighteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, is God unjust for inflicting wrath? For after all, aren't we showing God to be more righteous by being more wicked? How would it be just for God to judge us for making him look more righteous? And of course, this argument does have some merit if it were true that God's righteousness is only shown through our wickedness. In fact, some are slanderously teaching that, that is what Paul is teaching. 
that because God saved the Jew and the Gentile by grace through faith in Jesus, and not by the works of the law of Moses, then more sin would equal more grace and even more glorious salvation granted by God. Let's all then do evil that good may come. But is that statement true? Is God's righteousness only shown through man's wickedness? And the answer to that is no. God was righteous before man ever sinned. He was righteous before man was ever created. God doesn't need sin to prove that he is righteous. God is righteous because he is righteous. Rather, it is because of God's righteousness and his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So yes, our sin allowed God one way to demonstrate his righteousness, but he didn't need our sin in order to demonstrate that. Likewise, doing evil that good may come, that more grace can be received, is also not right. For those who come to Christ will die to sin, even though they are saved by grace. Our desire should not be to see how much more grace we can receive because of sin, but to walk in newness of life, being thankful for the grace we do receive from God. Therefore, God was just in condemning sinners because his righteousness doesn't need sin in order to be demonstrated. God was just in saving both Jew and Gentile by grace, where grace isn't received so that man could be saved by sinning more, but so that man could be saved in the first place. In all things, God is shown to be just. God will con Paul will continue this argument of the just judgment of God as we continue in chapter 3, something we will do, the Lord willing, in the next lesson. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Romans chapter 3, verses 9 to 20. So we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Oh.